Okay, it's time to put everything together and do the chi-squared independence test. And in fact, I've tried to fit everything onto one page. So this here will be the one thing that will be super important. How do we actually do the chi-squared test for independence? Here's good news. You'll probably be given the uh, table of observed frequencies. You'll be given a significance level. So remember, that'll be like 10% uh, or 5% or 1%. Maybe they'll even give you the critical value. And here's what you do. Step one, you write out the null hypothesis. So what does that mean? Remember what the null hypothesis is. I mean, it really helps to know uh, sort of what we're trying to do here. After that, we're going to put everything into our calculator. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. And after that, we're going to go ahead and do the test. So to do the test, I'll show you that as well. And I'll show you with an example right after it, just to put it all into practice. So step one, how do we do the null hypothesis? Do you remember what that is? In the other video I showed you, it's H0, where we say that blah, 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 whatever your first thing is, and blah, blah, blah are independent. So this is going to be the first thing we do, okay? First really important thing, we're going to write this out. Because if you're going to do a hypothesis test, which is what we're doing, you have to have the hypothesis. There we go. We're going to say blah and blah are independent. Well, you're going to be given a big table. In fact, I'll show you this example we were using in another one with the intelligence and smoking. That's what I'm going to show you, this table. So that table, how do you put it into your calculator? On your TI Inspire, it's uh, under you know new calculator page, do menu, go to matrix and create a matrix. And when you're done with that, you should store it as some letter. So I just call it A. That way you can refer to it. On the TI-84, you do a matrix and go to edit. And on the Casio, there's a way also to enter this matrix. So you put that stuff into your calculator so you can use it. All right, now we got to do the chi-squared test. So what we do is in the TI Inspire, from where we were in the matrix, well, we just go menu, stats, do stat tests. So I want the chi-squared two-way test. That's the key here. If you're on the TI-84, you just go to stat test, and it's called chi-squared test. What do you get from this? It's important to know sort of what does this spit out. So what does this tell you? This right here tells you It'll spit out some stuff for you. It'll actually spit out the chi-squared value. It'll tell you what that is. It'll tell you what uh, the p-value is, so that'll be nice. So talk about that's the probability that this thing you know, occurred by chance. So that'll be the p-value there. And it'll also give you the degrees of freedom. That was nice of it. Even though you could have done that yourself, it'll tell you that. Okay, so this right here is what it'll tell you. Okay, so now you've got this, you've got this, you've got this. Now what? Well, the most important part, actually, is putting it all together. So the most important thing is to say this. We're going to reject. This is going to be the key thing here. Okay, we're going to reject. And by the way, I'm going to mention this so many times. You need to memorize what I'm writing here. You need to reject H0 if, and there's two conditions when we could reject H0. It's if it's, uh, let's see, if it's the P value, is less than the significance level. Okay, I'll write it down as nice as I can here. So if the p-value is less than the significance level, then you reject h0. If the chi-squared statistics is greater than your critical value, you also reject it. So this, whoops, I can't spell critical, look at that. Critical value. And this is it. This is actually what you need. So I'm going to put this with uh, a big old red thing around it. I'll put some stars around it. I want to make sure you know to memorize this. This is the most important thing. Basically, for this, for goodness of fit, for everything else, basically this is the key to all of it. Okay, I could not make this big enough or put bigger sort of banners around it. This is so important. You need to memorize this. Okay, This is the key of it. This is everything. Because this is how we're going to determine if we should accept or reject this hypothesis. We're doing a hypothesis test. Here's what we do. Now, how can you remember how to do this? I don't know. Uh, I mean, one way that uh, I liked to think about it. Whoops. You know what I'll do? I'll just uh, keep going. Whoops. Here we go. Look. I've got this little joke right here I want to show you. In fact, just wait a second. Actually, I'll take it away right now. Um, what I want to do is this. Just 
tell you a little trick for remembering this uh, stuff here for rejecting and accepting and doing whatever okay so this is really dumb how I remember it but uh, I just think about it's almost like hey are you peeing less than a significant amount then you reject and I just remember that chi squared is opposite so this one is bigger than critical value just remember you have to pee less than a significant amount that's how I actually remember it in my head when I think about hypothesis testing ah you pee less than a significant amount in other words don't pee too much apparently so if you pee less than a significant amount then you reject h0 now what happens if p is bigger than significance level or if the chi squared is less than a critical value well, then you do not reject. You don't say accept, which is really weird. You don't technically accept it. All you can do is say, I don't reject it. And so this little picture that I have now is one of my favorite memes. I did not make it up. I wish I did, but it is so cute. It has to do with all of this because it makes fun of this. Because remember, I'm just saying we either reject a null hypothesis or we will. We could say we fail to reject. So this is so cute. Look at this. Roses are red, violets are blue. If you were a null hypothesis, I would fail to reject you. It was so cute. So this right here is what we need to do. This is so important. All right, let's look at an example then. So let's say you look at this example from a last video where I was showing about intelligence and smoking. And we want to do this uh, independence test at the significance level of 5%. Do you notice they told us this? So what's the null hypothesis? Ah, null hypothesis is easy. All we got to do, we say H0, we always say blah and blah are independent. It's a good way to phrase it like that. You don't have to, but it's a, it's a good trick to do it this way. So let's see, my overall category, we could say smoking. In this case, we can say that smoking and intelligence, we're going to say this, smoking and intelligence are independent. And then we're going to see if that statement's correct or not. So what does this imply? Right now, this implies that, well, smoking and intelligence have nothing to do with each other. That's what H0 says. And we're going to see if that's correct. All right, how do I actually do chi-squared? Well, first, I put data into a matrix, right? That's what I have to do. You know, and then I do the chi-squared two-way test. There's another one called Goff. Don't do that one yet. So basically, I'll teach you that later. So this right here is this chi-squared two-way test. This is how I'm going to do it. So watch how easy it is now. I get out my trusted calculator, and I say, um, hey, I would like to do a uh, new calculator. And I go over here to matrix, which is here. And I say, create a matrix. Great. How many rows and columns do I need? Hmm, let's see. I've got one, two, three rows. All right, that's three. And my columns then, whoops, columns are going to be four. So yeah, all right, cool. Now I'm ready. So now I just put in these numbers. Do you notice all I have to do is just put them in? So 279, and I press tab. 386, tab. 96, 2. And now watch, as I keep going, it just does it along like that. Isn't that nice? Every time I go tab, it just does the next one because it knows this is a big string of numbers, so it just wants them. So I'm just putting it all in. just takes a second. After this, we're going to have what we need here. 47, 64, and 2. On the TI-84, you do something like this as well, except they, they named the matrices. Now I press Enter. Here's the problem, though. I'm going to need to refer to it. So I need to give it a name, like Bob or whatever. I'll just call it A. So look careful on TI Inspire List. You see this little store right here, this little store button? So I'm going to go Control, Vars. I say store it and call it maybe A. So that way, anytime I type in the letter A, it just knows, oh, that's this one. That's useful for me. Because now I can do my statistics. So I go to menu, I go to statistics, I do stat tests, and look carefully. Do you see chi-squared two-way test is right here. Can you see it? Chi-squared two-way test. Boom. It says, where is your observed matrix? And I'm going to say, uh, it's matrix A, please. That's it. That's all it needed. Do you notice it gave me everything I needed? It gave me chi-squared. Which, by the way, that's what they were asking for you. So it's 16.9174. Okay, so 16.9174. It's not a bad idea to give all the decimals. Well, you could do three significant figures. But actually, for this stuff, I try to keep all the decimals I can. So this is your chi-squared statistic. All right, so what? Well, now we got this one. What's the value for degrees of freedom? <laughs> like this, find the mean, right, chi-squared? 
Uh, what's the degrees of freedom? Well, you could do it by hand. If you remember this equation, it goes rho minus 1 times column minus 1. And there were uh, three rows. There were four columns. So that would give me 2 times 3, which equals 6. So degree of freedom equals 6. Great. And by the way, you didn't have to figure this out by hand because your trusty calculator also told you that. Look, it said degrees of freedom is 6. Yay. Oh, by the way, a little pro tip for you if you're using the TI Inspire. If you do want to know where's all the expected values, they kind of tell you this. Look, they hint. See this expected value matrix here? Watch carefully. If I go to variables, I can open up expected value matrix. Look what it does. It tells me what all those were. So remember all those calculations I showed you in another video? It did it for you. So that's kind of handy. Uh, what I need, though, is also the p-value. That might help. So watch. p is 0.009591. I'm going to write that down. Okay, so p is 0.009591. p is 0.009591. I also needed this, just in case. All right, so what do I do with all this? Well, remember what I told you to memorize. We reject H0 if these two things happen. In fact, I'm going to, whoops, what am I doing? I'm trying to just copy this. So give me this right here, copy this. I'm just gonna try to do this because this is the important part, okay? No matter what you're doing in one of these questions, it's a good idea on your exam to even write this down to show the person marking your stuff that you know what you're doing, okay? Now, I'm not gonna need any of this. I'm not gonna need this. Uh, let's see, actually, I'll just get rid of everything here. Memorize this, I don't need that or that or that or that or that. But I do need this whole idea here. We reject H0 if. Love my writing, it went really crazy, didn't it? But oh well. Uh, so, we're going to reject H0 if this happens. So that's going to be the key part. So, what do I do with this information? Okay. Well, I'm going to use this. This is going to be my idea here. So, let's take a look and see if anything here is going to help us. So, can I, uh, do I know the critical value? Were we told that? Because sometimes you're told that, sometimes you're not. Do you notice I don't know the critical value? So because I don't know the critical value, I guess this method is not going to help me. So I'm going to cross that one off and say, well, that's not going to help. So I guess I'm going to say, I'm going to reject then, I'm going to reject h0. I'm just trying to show you here. If my p-value then, which is, by the way, 0 0.009591, if that's less than my significance level. My significance level was 5%, which is 0.05. So I'm going to reject H0 if this happens. So the question is, is this the case? Is 0 0.009 less than 0 0.05? That's the whole question you have to ask. See, this is the important part here. So yes. Do you see this is the case? This number is indeed less than that. What does this mean? That means I reject H0. In other words, remember what H0 was. H0 was saying that smoking and intelligence are independent. So what can I say now then? So I could say that uh, smoking, all I can say is, I can't say they're dependent. All I can say is smoking and intelligence. Now I'm going to reject H0, which means smoking and intelligence are not independent. So do you see, I have now made a conclusion, a mathematical conclusion. I can say, ah, to within 5% significance level at least. So in other words, I'm confident within 5% that smoking and intelligence are not independent. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, they're related somehow. Now, this doesn't necessarily tell you that, you know, dumber people are smoking or smarter people are smoking. You'd have to do more investigations. Maybe you'd have to see which way it goes. Is it monotonic? Does it increase or decrease? So keep in mind, all we could state, though, is that they are not independent. Do you notice? That's all we've done. We have rejected the null hypothesis. We cannot say, though, if, uh, you know, smarter people smoke more. We can't say that. All we can say is they're not independent. We'd have to do different tests to figure out other stuff. But you see how this is really, really powerful, though? You can, you can figure out an answer to a question based on categories with this magic trick. This is used in biology a lot. 
That's for sure. Also in like environmental studies, uh, testing drugs, things like that, this is so important to be able to tell, is this thing important? Well, now we can state, in this case right here, these are not independent, which is good to know.